Death is too stupid for Mr. Shere Khan. But is that actually true? I mean, he does vanish from time to time, but is he capable of defeating an entire Ratchet and Clan game? I think this is going to be horrible, but let's find out. Now, how Mr. Zircon operates is sometimes entirely different from game to game. It does sound simple, right? Just equip the droid and he will follow you to deal support damage to enemies. Well, let's take a closer look and see if Mr. Zircon can take on all the stinky aliens by himself. My journey started in a cracking time. The rules are simple. We are not allowed to deal damage to enemies other than with Mr. Zircon. So smash crates or press buttons with the wrench is fine, just no damage. Oh, and obviously the clank segments don't count. We are playing on the hardest difficulty, in this case hardcore, but also on New Game Plus, since Mr. Zircon is otherwise only buyable after a few levels. And we want to see if Mr. Zircon is up to the job of defeating an entire game. Now in the Zolar Forest, Mr. Zircon is actually great. There are a lot of Xyphoids, which Mr. Zircon can easily three-shot. It takes him almost no time to acquire a new target. Even on level 2, which he is right now, his fire rate is quite good. I mean, the fact that it takes him 3 shots to kill one Xyphoid doesn't bode well for the run, but hey, at least Mr. Zircon is capable of getting through the Zolar Forest. The big Xyphoids take a bit of time, and especially the plants that spawn Xyphoids are annoying, since Mr. Zircon often chooses to target enemies instead of the plants, which makes sure more enemies are here. But all is good until we have to deal with the goons of Lord Forcelon. And this is going to take a while. We have to play the dodging game. I believe on this level every goon is about a 30 to 40 hit KO. So you can imagine that this is going to take a while. It's unfortunate that we don't have Clank or the hover boots here. That would make us a little more mobile. But in the end it only took me 6 minutes to move on to the next part. Which is really not so bad as I thought. Big reasons for that are that the Fongoids also deal damage, plus the fact that there is a vendor here, which is really good. When I open ammo crates, it will sometimes drop the wrong ammo, leaving me with no Zircons left. So the vendor deals with that problem entirely. Fine, we move on and Vorslon drops all these small enemies on us. But that is actually great for Mr. Zircon's fire rate. We take all the necessary experience that we can get and get to the first tank enemy of the game. I know these have a lot of hit points, but it takes Mr. Zircon an entire minute of non-stop firing, plus the hits from the Fungoids to take out the tank. That's insane. But the only thing we have to do here is dodge the attacks. And with one enemy that's very manageable. The idea was to do a Mr. Zircon solo run, but obviously things change and you'll see why. And things don't really change much on Lord Forcelon's warship. You just have to be patient and run away constantly. Sometimes ammo is hard to come by, but it was never a problem. I tried to save some time by making this jump, twice, but you can't make it and you end up losing more time. I do want to mention this room, where there are multiple enemy classes which target you in different ways. This is maybe a little hard since there are more things that you have to keep in mind. I remember from my ranch only run from two years ago how hard the Lancers are. So I'm not looking forward to the part where they show up. When the alarm goes off, I try to speedrun this entire part by running through the enemies. Even with the shooters alive, there is this very niche spot which we can just pull the bridge from. These things make sure Quark kills enemies faster. Or at least it feels like that. There is a tank, but I try not to deal with that and I just run around. Unfortunately, the tank has to die to continue. So you just have to wait and acquire more Mr. Zircon ammo. I think it takes three entire Zircons to take out the tank. It's not too too difficult, you just have to be patient and keep dodging. However, that will come to a halt. Because battling Lord Vorcelon... Well, I don't really know how to call this. We are in this awkward position where the fight is not hard at all, but Mr. Zircon is just not up to the task. See, Vorcelon, for this point in the game, is very slow, so his attacks are very easy to dodge. And when I do get hit, it doesn't matter. If we start the fight with full health, we have 114 HP, which is more than enough combined with my Hyperflux armor. Every hit on me deals about 2 to 5 HP of damage. So surviving is not the issue. I think I can survive this fight for an entire workday straight and still be alive. 
However, it's Mr. Zircon that's the problem. And yes, Mr. Zircon wishes to kill you. <laughs> but wishing and actually doing it are two different things entirely. Mr. Zircon just doesn't deal enough damage and he despawns after his time or shot limit has been reached. I've used all five, which is the max, level four Zircons and look how much damage Vorsalon has. Or better said, look at how many lives he still has remaining. That's terrible. And I'm not sure if I am even getting experience points for Zircon hitting Vorsalon. And even if I do, that last level to get to Mr. Zircon the Destroyer will not make it so that I can defeat Vorsalon. But does ammo not spawn? Well, no, because if you have all weapons, which I do after beating an entire game, the game is programmed to only drop ammo when you get low on it. The game expects you to switch to a different weapon and rotate between them. So to my knowledge, there is no way of replenishing ammo here. I'm sure that there is a cheat code for unlimited ammo, but even if I had acquired enough skill points in my previous run, which I don't, enabling a cheat code is, well, literally cheating. It also doesn't feel good, even if I would consider it to save the run. Because finding ammo is part of a solo run, like this one, always having Mr. Zircon ammo makes sure that I only have to dodge shots. Taking that away is a big portion of what this challenge is all about. In fact, this ammo problem is the reason why any solo run in this game is impossible. I had considered to make a 17 part series on this channel where we try to do a solo run with every weapon in the game and rank them. But this rule completely diminishes that idea. Instead, here I am dodging attacks for half an hour, hoping that something interesting might happen. But no it doesn't. We have this incredibly dumb fight where one person barely gets attacked, the other person dodges every attack while both contestants keep hyping themselves up by yelling things like Amateur, did you really think you can kill Lord Vorsalon? And Mr. Zircon directs a symphony of pain. <laughs> Fine. So the run in A Cracking Time ends at level 2. But surely it cannot get worse than that, right? Well, if we take a closer look at Tools of Destruction, things don't get much better. In level 1, I believe that all enemies are optional, so we run past them. I do equip Mr. Zircon just for fun though, but that was a mistake. Yes, he does help out from time to time, but I forgot one crucial detail about him. Now what could that be? Oh, I don't know. Maybe the fact that Mr. Zircon isn't even a weapon at all in this game. Minor detail. No, he is a device in this game. And that makes Mr. Zircon even more useless than before. Because the usual ammo crates you find everywhere did give Mr. Zircon ammo occasionally. But now it cannot give you ammo for something that isn't even a weapon. So when we get to Kobalia, we have two Zircons left. I went into this run with only three and I used one in Metropolis. Fortunately, I remember this upon entering this level. So I use a different strategy. Not use Mr. Zircon at all. You can just skip most enemies and you need every last damage point that Mr. Zircon can deal on the right enemies. And as good as that sounds, this strategy is ineffective. There are more reasons that I'll talk about, but the main one is that there is some sort of wall here and you cannot get through. Instead, you have to take out this bug to open it. So we have to use Mr. Zircon here, wasting one of my two precious ammo. So I very much doubt this to be possible, because now it's a bug, but can you imagine a leviathan? <laughs> now that would be terrible. But fine, we run past every enemy here. And then, another one of these walls block the road. Now I want to try and jump over it, but I get stuck in a glitch and cannot move. The enemies just take me out. Well, try again, right? Well, this happened. So time to reset the planet and make it back. Here I also try to jump in a swamp, hoping that we can find some sort of glitch that gets me to the gelatonium factory. There we can actually buy Mr. Zircons. But there's an invisible wall here. And at this point, I know I'm wasting my time. I do make it back, but the same glitch makes sure that there is no way of jumping over the wall. I also try to get onto this ledge, but in vain. The run is over. 
Now I do know that there are strats where you use the shock ravager and you keep gaining more height. Maybe that would work? It's technically in the rule set of no dealing damage to enemies with weapons, but that wouldn't be a Mr. Zircon only run, right? And besides, what am I even talking about? The Leviathan up next is going to demolish me, eat me alive, crush me. Tools of Destruction also only makes it to level 2. But fine. Things cannot possibly get worse, right? <laughs> well, let's talk about Ratchet & Clank Q-Force, or Full Frontal Assault, depending on where you live. In this game, acquiring weapons works entirely different than in every other game. Here, the game drops weapon pods. So our first objective is to get to a weapon pod that actually gives us a Mr. Zircon. But we run into a problem. We are trapped in our Q-Force base for now and Grungoid spawn in. How am I possibly going to deal with that? They start to destroy my generators and I think it's run over right here. I try jumping over the wall but it's in vain. The Grungoids have already destroyed two of my generators until... Wait, what happened? Oh, Clank and Quark operate turrets and the Grungoids came in their range. So the run isn't dead yet. This is a tutorial, so we buy a turret and then do the weapon pod thing. I know this will only give me a combustor, which I cannot use, but we have to do it regardless. But after that, we are about to run into a wall. See, this beacon spawns. And if we take this one out, I'm pretty sure that we would be able to get Mr. Zircon. However, his health bar clearly states that he is an enemy. And remember the rules? No dealing damage with a weapon that isn't Mr. Zircon. Yep, in this game we don't even make it to Mr. Zircon. Which is unfortunate. So I thought, why not try to win a multiplayer game with only Mr. Zircon. Don't get me wrong, I think there's no chance in the world that that's possible. I wouldn't even know how to get Mr. Zircon there, since all the weapon nods have four neutral turrets in them. Besides, Mr. Zircon is helpful in some cases there, but he deals almost no damage. And there's also a big chance that you won't even get to choose him when you do finally take over a knot. However, I cannot even make it that far since I waited all night to find an online game, but no player ever showed up. I mean, I totally expected that since this game is, what, 12 years old, but still. It is too bad because there really are good elements in the multiplayer here. While waiting, I finished my normal run on Ratchet & Clank PS4, so I could start our Mr. Zircon only run in New Game Plus on that game, which we'll discuss next. It starts with a great upgrade. Mr. Zircon has the V5 or 6 upgrade, I'd forget. Anyway, he will now be accompanied by Little Zircon, or Zircon Jr, whatever you want to call him. But this seems great. All these small enemies stand no chance against us. Holy damn, they are doing... Well, shit. This is not good. And I hate to break this to you, but this is a problem. There's no way around. And actually, I knew this already. Because I once started a wrench only run in this game as well. But you know, my run ended after 4 minutes of gameplay. And listen, of course there are always going to be people commenting, but Teal Game Master already did this. And yeah, he did, but the way he did it was on New Game Plus, while having collected all gold bolts to initiate the invincibility glitch and get out of bounds. Which breaks basically every one of my rules. I really don't like glitches, and frankly, I won't be using them in any game, ever. The only exceptions are glitches that are okay for me within the realm of reason and are more oversights that we can exploit to have a better result of the challenge I'm doing. Furthermore, there's only one out of the map glitch in Into the Nexus that I have permanently allowed for a reason I'll get into shortly. But let's say we cheat a little and take these walls down with bombs. Will that help? At least we can see Mr. Zircon and Zircon Jr. in action. It's actually awful to see how little damage they do, but you know, they are able to take out these droids. We reunite with Clank and then things get messy. Enemies are attacking Ratchet's garage. Now Mr. Zircon is able to take out a few enemies, but there are quite a few. And that's a problem. 
Not only that, but this gunship is opening heavy fire on us. I mean, of course, it's hard difficulty challenge mode, but still. Mr. Zircon and his son are unable to take on these enemies. And the same problem as in a crack in time occurs. Ammo doesn't spawn. Once I ran out of Mr. Zircon's, I ran across the entire battlefield searching for ammo, which is not here. I even went back to the other side of the level, but the swing shot target is gone on the left side and the right side is blocked off. So, yeah. One little, two little, dead little alien. But really, Zircon, four little, five little, dead little aliens is really too much. And even if I were to defeat them, I'm not really sure what I'd do with the button that opens the garage that is hanging over a ravine. Zircon is definitely not going to be hitting that. So yeah, Ratchet and Clank PS4 and set level 1. So things are really not looking good. There are only two games remaining. But I've never actually owned a copy of All For One. I've never played the game and I don't know anything about it. So I have to do the one thing I've been dreading here all along, but I have no other choice. I have to attempt into the Nexus, which I hate. My wrench only run from one and a half years ago still haunts me. It was just so damn hard which caused me to basically be burnt out of this game. It was still a good video which I'm really damn proud of though. You should check it out. Just like how I should man up and check out if Mr. Zircon can beat it. Unfortunately, I still have to beat Mr. I from my previous wrench only run save file. And this guy is awful. Even with weapons. Sure, I bought a few level 1 weapons, but still. I even died one time, which I did not expect. I was trying to comfort myself by saying that this will make sure that I could practice for my actual Zircon run. But let's face it, we're never going to make it to this place. The best game so far made it to level 2. This is probably going to be just as expected, but okay. We immediately encountered a glitch that I talk about. When playing normally, it's impossible to shoot down the bridge with anything other than a ranged weapon. Not only is this forbidden, but the ranch has not enough range to hit it, and Mr. Zircon cannot target it. So I have added this out of the map glitch to my permanent strategy in my runs. The reason is that there is an easy way to bypass this, and it allows for the run to actually start. So the thugs for last board our ship. You who, Mr. Zircon is looking to kill you. And it doesn't look good. I keep on running away from the enemies and I keep getting hit. That is my own fault, but I still have to adjust to this game. But there is a problem. We only have two Mr. Zircon ammo and two Mr. Zircons is not even enough to take out the first two enemies. There are four ammo boxes here but it feels like they spawn ammo at random. And since I have six weapons, it could be a one in six chance to actually spawn ammo. I think it's a little more than that since sometimes I notice that the game notices that I am on low ammo. But the odds are really not in my favor. My strategy is to let the Mr. Zircon run out and then open the ammo box because it feels like I get more Mr. Zircon ammo this way. But that is just a feeling. But after a few times I even added something else to my strategy. Before starting the battle I equip a Mr. Zircon and immediately open this ammo box right here. Sometimes that will instantly give me back the ammo I just spent, making sure I have practically 3 ammo. Is that going to be enough? The answer is no, although I did defeat 2 enemies this time and got way further. But what also plays a big factor here is that Mr. Zircon upgrades to level 2 here giving me my little Zircon back. And it just so happens to be that he enjoys killing stinky aliens as well, yay! With that and my amazing evasion moves, I managed to win. After four tries, of course. But the only thing I have to do is run away and equip new Zircons. Sometimes that is just a guessing game because I keep running away and Mr. Zircon will often shoot from outside of my screen borders, but whatever. It's not so bad. And you know what's even better? If you're doing this like I am right now, Mr. Zircon will even upgrade to level 3. And that means that our final family member will join the fight. Give a round of applause for Mrs. Zircon! A family that slays together, stays together. 
So let's slay! And the difference is immense. They deal so much damage, now that I have practically 3 times the firepower. My strategy is to lure the enemies from the second room back into the first room, so we always have access to ammo or nanotech if we need it. Now one of the last rooms is the hardest, and I kept on losing much lives in the beginning part, but I found this amazing strategy completely by accident. See, right before you enter the room is an ammo crate, but if I have max ammo I will try to save it for later. However, the door closes right behind me and I am unable to get this ammo. The plan was to lure them here and deplete the Zircon family ammo with these enemies, refill it, hopefully with the RNG, and then use my remaining 2 ammo to take out the rest of the room. However, Zircon's family has so much life and after killing a few enemies they are not even dead yet. But the best thing happened. Once I knew that staying behind was not cool, I lured them here and simply ran for it. But the door would still close with the enemies behind it. And they simply die. So it's all about teamwork, my evasion strategies and the loving Zircon family against the world. And I'm not even kidding, the Zircons are great together. They all have a specific role on the team. Mr. Zircon is just a casual shooter. Zircon Jr. is great at targeting new enemies and dealing small support damage. While Mrs. Zircon shoots slightly bigger... Well, let's call them bombs. They really do work together as a team, which is really cool to me. What is also really cool to me is that I found out that these enemies behind this door can... Well, for some reason, not move further than here. And this makes them easy targets for our trusty Zircons. I mean, they shoot them with passion. As you know, Mr. Zircon does not require bolts. His currency is pain. Outside of the ship is quite a difficult section though. The strategy that I settled on is to equip Zircons and run as fast as possible. Sometimes by even using the zero gravity rule set. It's not easy, but I made it about 7 tries or something. So you can do it as well. So everything we're doing so far is great, right? But we all know what's coming up. The Miro ruins, Planet Yerik, made me question my sanity last time when I visited this place. So you know it's not gonna be as easy as the first try, are you kidding me? However, there's a big difference between then and now. I can buy the Omega Zircon family, which allows me to upgrade to level 4 and after a while to level 5 and 6 respectively. Not only that, but I currently own 190 Raritanium, which allows me to fully upgrade Mr. Zircon's damage output, how long they stay, their fire rate, their range, and most importantly, their ammo supply. And with all this, we go from Zircons which were okay, to way better Zircons in every way possible. Which is amazing. And you know what? It's about to get even better. Yes, they can now charge a proton blast together, which makes them stop firing for about one and a half seconds and then unleash a shot which does really, really good damage. So with all of this, how does this part, which took me 45 minutes last time, look now? Okay. Okay, he dies in about a second, which is record time, okay. Here's the second drop of enemies, and all Zircons target a different enemy. Okay. Okay! That... Wow! Zircons! Outstanding performance! This was great! To be fair, this was my second try, but hey, this is amazing! But surely that will not carry us through the run, right? Now the flyers will spawn in, which were a massive problem last time. But not for the Zircon family! Even ammo is no longer a problem, since we have 6 in reserve. It didn't happen a single time here that I would have used 6 Zircon families before I found at least one more ammo. They just stay too long, deal too much damage and just win. Here, upgrade to level 5, plus 200% damage. I'm not sure if that's the exact value, but come on, this is getting ridiculous. Even the 4 flyers, which I declared unbeatable after 70 minutes of trying with only the wrench, went down in 12 seconds. And no, not 12 seconds each, 12 seconds for all of them. What a discrepancy between games, wow. Even the blaze bot went down using only 2 Zircon family ammo. 
in 40 seconds. Could we have discovered a run? Is Into the Nexus the game we actually beat using only Zircons? Now I am constantly hyping them up, but that's only because my expectations of this game are dramatically low. I am used to spending an hour per room and still not succeed entirely. Anyway, this is now way easier, but they are still second or third try victories. And this trend continues in the Destructor Palooza. The usual welcoming committee and the battle against the Mangler were a little difficult, but not unbeatable. However, in the third run, it gets tense. We have 30 seconds to defeat all these nests and the Cerethoids. I have no control over that, and frankly, although we're doing great, the run could be in serious jeopardy. The fate of the run is entirely up to these AI droids, which, to be honest, worked so far, but I have no way to deal with this challenge. There's like seven nests, I believe, and during this time, the Zircons are constantly targeting Cerethoids and hereby doing almost no damage to the nests. So I failed this challenge time and again. And for the first time in an hour, I felt dread again. I tried all different kinds of things, and although I would come close sometimes, I haven't actually beat it yet. I thought that maybe if I jumped on top of the nests, the Zircons would be able to notice that the nest is the real threat here, and not the Cerethoids. But it didn't work. The trick is going to be positioning. I noticed that I came close a few times if I started on the right side and make my way left. But when we get to our final upgrade, another 100% damage is added to the Zircons. I die close after, but in the next attempt you can definitely see the results right away. The first nest gets taken out in mere frames. This is a little lucky though, but still massive progress. Now the teamwork comes into play. It's hard to see, but Mrs. Zircon is targeting this nest, while Mr. Zircon and Little Zircon are attacking the one over there. It takes about 3 seconds, but that's 2 nests down in no time. And with 1 second left, we beat the challenge. Damn, with the progress we made, I would have hated it if the challenge ended here. But as we all know, this was the warm-up, the regular season, the student time if you will. Now we're ready for the game, the playoffs, university. Because what is a theme in these runs is that planet Silox is so ungodly difficult that it's really not fair in these challenges. How are the Zircons going to be dealing with that? Well, just skip right to the action and talk about my most hated platform in the Ratchet and Clank franchise. I was stuck here for over three hours last time because I had to grind to get more lives. And even after three hours, I found out that it's theoretically impossible to beat this on Legend difficulty. But with the Zircons, I figured it would be a little different, especially if I can get them to hit more enemies at once. The real problem here are the flyers. The regular enemies would sometimes hit me and take away lives already, but that doesn't bother me so much. I can adapt from that. But when battling the flyers, I'm going to need luck and be as evasive as possible. Now it cost me many attempts, but I eventually did manage to take out the flyers. And we battled the ship. With 95 health left, it should be doable, but I really can't afford to get hit more than 2 or 3 times. But with these attacks, it really is doable. I got hit once I believe, but that makes sure that we defeat the ship and we can move on to this awful place. And now this didn't take me 1 attempt, or 2 attempts, or 10 attempts. Now this took me more than 25 attempts. Because yeah, some of these battles are going to be difficult and the difficulty is increasing drastically here. Many of my runs basically ended at the blaze bot. I mean, not really, I think I only died once from him, but I do need as much lives later for 4 flyers and a gunship. The blaze bot can't really deal any hit point of damage to me or the run is basically over. So I ended up with a strategy which does work and gives me a few seconds of extra damage on the enemies. I will run as much forward as possible. The enemies spawn in the back and the faster I get to them after they spawn, the faster they will die. The Blazebot only starts attacking on the platform where Clank is and in the seconds he will fly there, he is completely open to fire. So I try to push him back as much as possible. The flyers here make things a little harder, but eventually you will fight the Blazebot. I'd recommend to study his behavior first, because you have to know when he's going to use which attacks exactly. 
It looks like he's going to attack, but then waits a second before actually doing so, tricking you to jump and taking damage when you land. Anyway, <laughs> once you defeat the Blazebot, most of my runs would basically end right at the flyers. There are just too many shots and it's very hard to predict where it's safe and not. Now after 25 attempts, I found a <laughs> pro gamer move. Yeah, let's just call it that. Hide behind the fueling pump. Although in reality that would be the most dangerous things that we can do, here it just works. The Zircons are able to take out two of the four flyers but stop there. Except little Zircon who is still in a line of sight on the enemies. But I cannot count on the damage of my weakest droid so I decide to expose myself and let the entire family take care of the situation. This strat unfortunately does not work while battling the gunship though. There is no Zircon that can actually get into a line of sight on it. But if you keep focusing you can definitely defeat him. Now let's fast forward to the fight against Neftim Prog. And having battled him hours last time really does help. I have a lot of insight on his behavior and I can use that to my advantage to stay alive. However, I am still good in not getting hit too often from him, but when I do get hit, Neftin deals massive damage. Nether armor would be great here, but we only have half of the bolts I would need to get that. The only so-called strategy I use is that once Neftin does the attacks where he starts running towards you, I keep running away from him as much as possible, since that makes sure he will do one of the easier attacks. Now I can make it to the part where Neftin goes away and sends waves of enemies on trains consistently. And those enemies are no joke, I've actually been taken out by them multiple times. However, what I can do, see what door the train comes out of. If I position right outside of that door, the Zircons have a line of sight on them faster. This gives me about a second more to deal damage to the enemies. And if the enemies die a second faster, I am safer. These are the sort of things that you have to keep in mind, because the second phase is way harder. If Neftin returns, he will bring flyers, which are a massive threat. I'd recommend to only continue fighting Neftin once the flyers are dealt with. That or maybe it would be best to let little Zircon do residual damage on Neftin while Mr. and Mrs. Zircon take out the flyers. I did get a lucky nanotech upgrade in this battle, which caused me to win, however I maybe could have won if I didn't get that, but it was a nice bonus. In the end we did win and I am really glad because per usual Planet Silox at this point has taken me almost an hour and a half. But we can move on to Planet Thram, which always feels like not really important and is just here to extend the game's duration. Anyway in this run it's great, because the more Garkathon horns I collect, the more money the smuggler will give me. That plus the fact that I don't get hit that much because of the hover boots and eventually the jetpack. This adds up the bolt bonus with all these small enemies. It quickly goes from times 3, times 4, times 5 and sometimes all the way goes to times 10. I could also choose to go to planet Igliac Meridian City immediately, but the truth is I'm delaying. I am terrified of the last section, and rightfully so. Taking on the Nether Brutes is one of my true nightmares from Into the Nexus. Last time it took me more than 6 hours I believe. And if I want at least some kind of chance I'm going to need Nether Armor. There are no if, ands or buts. So I spent a long time finding as much horns as possible. At one point I decide I don't have enough quite yet but with a good night's sleep Maybe in the morning I can find the courage to start the journey I've been dreading for so long. Okay, the final chapter of the Zircon family is about to be written. Let me just clarify that this is the only planet in the Ratchet and Clank universe where I allow myself to go back to a weapons vendor to refill lives. Because I can tell you right away, without doing this, this is not even remotely gonna be possible. So I scout out every last nether brute and see what we're up against. And like I thought, we are in for hell. Let's start by talking about the nether brute in the northwest. There are two flying big boys guarding the brute, which we have to take out. The good thing about these guys is that they don't fire a lot. However, when they do and hit you, they can just two shot you. So if you get unlucky and hit you with two shots at the same time, you're just done. 
Oh, and don't forget the occasional nether that just roams here. So the Zircon family just keeps on firing and I made a deal with myself. Until the nether brute has half lives remaining, I'm going back to the vendor when I'm on 70 health or less. After that I'm going back when I have less than 100 HP. Just to be safe, no taking risks here. And because of all the scouting that I've done, I now have enough money to purchase the fancy nether armor. Damn, looking good Ratchet. I mean, measly furball, as Mr. Zircon would say. But with this nether armor, I think this at least may be possible. I say may, because we are dealing with only three Mr. Zircons. Now going back to the weapons vendor isn't good per se. In fact, when you do so, the nether brute has the chance to redeploy all these nest portals. And on legend difficulty, and of course challenge mode, in each area there can be up to four portals which spawn in nethers. So refilling life's great, but then you return to a battlefield where all these enemies have had a chance to respawn. You're walking in total chaos. A lot of times upon entering, you get hit once or twice and you can immediately turn back around to refill your lives again. And remember that these trips cost about 25 seconds each, so the time adds up. The only thing that I can do is stand below the nether brute and keep jumping left to right and evade as much enemy firepower as possible. Three zircons of course makes a huge difference instead of just one. Some can target the brute, others can target the nethers. Now after a long time I had finally defeated this brute. Three to go. Now it's time for the one in the northeast. And the strategy remains the same. My estimate is that I went back to the vendor to refill lives for about, I don't know, 19 times. I found out that creating a small path in the enemy fire line works wonders for finding the best position under the brute. Now here you think, why not defeat the nethers first? That is out of the question. The nether brute just respawns the entire battlefield back with enemies while I go to get my HP back. But most times the Zircons all kept firing on the enemies. And while jumping, I kept staring to the brute's health bar which wouldn't drop. Now I did find a spot where Mr. and Mrs. Zircon were able to take out lots of enemies, while little Zircon is being a chat and taking on the most dangerous enemy all by himself. So as time went by, I started to take advantage of this. Little Zircon turned out to be the MVP of the battle and defeated the nether brute. Well, not by himself, but basically by himself. Amazing. I will skip over the one in the east because he works quite the same. And let's talk about the last one, the one in the tower. Here something unfortunate happens. For some reason, when I have defeated the enemies, the nether brute won't trigger. He will only sometimes, but then he spawns in nest portals and goes back to his AFK status. And I've done everything I can. At one point I just hoverboot right into him and fell to my death. But the Zircons don't register him as an enemy as long as he is in this state. But I have to be honest, I really do believe that this is a glitch that works for me. Because nether brutes are in this state when they fly high in the air. We do trigger the brute to come down upon defeating the enemies, but for some reason he just won't attack us. Now if this is actually a thing, the challenge ends right here because Mr. Zircon won't take out the enemy that has to die. But since I believed this to be a glitch on my end, I thought it was reasonable to throw my wrench at the brute whenever he got into this state, which happens five times in a successful battle. So if you consider this run over, fine. However, I don't have time to mourn this loss, because my mind is already set on defeating Mr. I. Because this guy? <laughs> oh man, this guy is a Zircon Ender. The first two phases are a little difficult, but take your time and it should be okay. I want to talk about the final phase. Here the nether boss gets very, very difficult, but in the most poetic way possible. Every struggle we had with Mr. Zircon in every game we've played so far is present for one final time in this fight. So it's like full circle, but in a bad way. And the most obvious two struggles are that the enemies just deal way too much damage and the ammo problem reveals itself yet again. It seems like we're back to random ammo spawns. That, or maybe it just becomes way more noticeable since the lack of ammo boxes available. But how is my ammo draining so fast? Well, that's because of Mr. Eye's moveset. Specifically the move where he shoots the laser from his eye. 
this is really the Zircon killer laser of death. Because I had noticed in the run that some ammo pods stayed way longer than others. Others were just gone in seconds. And in this fight, especially in the part where you are upside down, it becomes abundantly clear that enemies can in fact kill the Zircon family. Mr. Zircon does not need nanotech to survive. He lives on fear. But that turns out to be not true. Because while running away from the laser, the Zircons get hit by the laser and almost die instantly. And with the little ammo to find, that's a real problem. But what is an even bigger problem is that in the last 15% health, Mr. I starts spawning nest portals. And they spawn so many nethers that we can almost not even stand on our small platform anymore. Oh, and the few spots that are safe are frequently blocked by the attacks of Mr. I himself. It's total madness. They were rare, but with good evasion and good ammo luck, I could get very good runs until the nest portal spawned and there was no way. Now, I could make you watch about one and a half hours of unedited footage of me trying to win, but it's in vain. The nethers at the end really are run enders right now. And the Zircon family is just not up to the task of defeating them. I mean, I have no control over them. I just want to be evasive and that is very hard to do if your screen is blocked off by nethers everywhere. So having lost countless of times, I knew that on Legend difficulty challenge mode, it is just not possible. The luck I would need is just too much, so I'm really sorry but I set my game to hero difficulty challenge mode. And you can see the difference instantly. The Zircon Killer Laser of Death is not nearly as fast and accurate. Plus, whenever it does hit, it deals less damage to the Zircon family. And the Zircons can actually survive now. This makes dealing with ammo a lot better. And once the nethers finally spawn, they die faster and I take less damage. Oh, plus the fact that the nether boss now spawns in a nest portal less. So a little cheap to lower the difficulty, but trust me. I have done so many runs that would just simply end right away after 10 minutes of gameplay and it wasn't even in my control. But on this difficulty, I won in my first try. There was a long moment where I couldn't even see the remaining health of the nether boss and he kept not dying, but eventually he did. So yes, Mr. Zircon can definitely beat one of the Ratchet games. Given this would not have been possible on his own, but with his entire family, yes. And really, that is fair game since he was built this way in Into the Nexus. Now this video turned out to be way bigger than I thought when I initially had the idea to do a Zircon only run. So I'm gonna go, have to work on more videos. This has been yet another obscure video game run, so until next time I'd say, take care.